Hey everybody, Larry Lawton here. I got a good video for you today. I'm gonna to explain exactly what visiting in prison is like from the visitor's point of view and also from the person being visited. Let's just go from my point of view. What is it like when you get a visit? Well, I'll tell you what. It's a very stressful time and I'll tell you why. First of all, you're gonna see guys, you know, some people get visits a lot. First of all, how the visits work in the federal system is you can't get a visit every weekend. You get so many points and then once you use up those points, you can't have a visit so your points reload the next month. I think you got eight points, if I remember correctly, eight, eight or six points uh, per month. Now, a weekend visit would be two points. So the most you can do if you had six points is get three weekend visits and that's it. Now it doesn't matter as far as how many, you can only have X amount of people come in anyway, uh, that's, but it doesn't matter like the points didn't go per person, didn't do that. So here you are as a person who's, who's getting visited in prison, you, uh, it, it's just stressful when you're poor. First of all, you're thinking of points and then you're thinking, okay, now if you have a wife or if you have children, you wanna see your kids. But you know, even, even with the wife and the children and stuff of that nature, what do you do? You wanna see friends? You wanna, uh, I'll tell you the truth now. Uh, if, if you're a guy who's playing games, meaning a guy who's running one of the hustles in prison, and you had a maybe a stripper come on in because she's bringing dope in for you, that's a visit, that's a point. I mean, you know, you're thinking a lot of money I can make, or I can visit people. I mean, there's a lot to think about when you're uh, getting visits. Well, I'm not gonna talk about the guy who's getting dope in from prison, because that, that's different, because that's a whole different, when that person comes in and we might know about it, only a few people probably will know about it, you get excited, because you're waiting for his visit to end, and you're praying you don't hear that he went to the hole, because if he went to the hole, he got caught. So you, you're praying he didn't get to the hole, because he's gonna come back with, with whatever dope they bring in, and then you guys are either gonna get high, or uh, you guys are gonna start making money in the, in the prison. That's, that's how it works, and that's prison. But I'm talking about the regular. This is Larry Lawton who's getting a visit and he's getting a visit from his daughter, Ashley, and obviously my ex-wife, Melissa, and their family used to come up a lot. Now, some inmates go really overboard. They have what they call visiting clothes. You know, you get a pair of khakis and uh, a shirt. I mean, this is what you get in prison. I mean, they issue you this, and that's what you have to go to visit in. You will see guys get to the nines. I mean, pressed and tailored like you're Oh, I mean the best you can be, man. Creases, the whole works. I mean, looking sharp, man. They, they, they go out to their visiting room and they're looking sharp. Me, I never did that. I, I could care less. I just wanted to get out there and, and see the people. And on my end, you know, here's the worst thing. Now, once you, you can't, when I was in, you could not call a cell phone. Had to have a landline. In fact, when I was in prison, a person that you wanted to call, they couldn't give us a landline. So your parents had to, to maintain a landline. Now, we gotta remember, I got out of prison in 2007, so a lot of people still had landlines. So it, with that regard, it, it was pretty easy. Now, today, I'm sure you could call a cell phone, but it wasn't where you couldn't. So here was the dilemma there. Your family's telling you to come in a visit. They might be driving four hours, five hours to come visiting you. Now, from when they leave their house, you have no more communication with them until you see them. There's no way to contact them. You start stressing. Let's say they say, okay, we're gonna be there in the morning, we wanna get the all day visit, we wanna be there all day. Sure enough, they're waiting. And now they keep calling. Now you're waiting in your unit, because you know you're getting a visit, and you tell the guard, hey, uh, I'm waiting for on a visit, so I'll be in my cell. I'll be in the unit, so. Because what happens when the, the visiting room will call the unit where the guy is and say, hey, send Lawton down, he's got a visit. So Lawton fucking, you know, the, the guard get, drops the phone. Lawton, Johnson, whoever it is, you know, visit. And so you know, and you get, you're already ready to go. You got your ID card and your whatever you have to be dressed in a specific way. And you get to the uh, door, God lets you out, and you head to the visiting room. Now, once you get to the visiting room, you get strip searched. Now you go in, they open the door, strip, I mean, buck naked, lift the balls, turn around, spread the ass, go ahead, get through. Now, when you walk in the visiting room itself, you don't just go to your people. You'll see where they are. Now, they've been assigned a seat. They've been assigned an area right here. Now, in the penitentiaries, you couldn't sit next to each other. That's another thing. And by policy, you got one hug. You could hug your wife, and after that, you're not supposed to touch him. You hug your daughter, 
and that's supposed to. Now, you want to talk about bad policies. How do they expect families to stay together when they do shit like this? It, it drove me crazy but with, with stuff like this. But here I am. Uh, I would see, you know, look where they are. I got my ID. Now I'm waiting at the desk. There's a, there's a guard up inside the busy rooms in the desk. Now he's just watching everybody, doing his thing. Now you walk in, you got to give your ID card, and then he'll go, go ahead. And then you go, go to your people. And they watch you sometimes, man. Especially the certain people, you know, they know what goes on. They're not stupid either. But they'll, they'll, they'll keep an eye on you and they'll watch you. So here, here they are, watching you pretty good. By this point, your daughter has ran up to you and just hugged you. And that's the best feeling in the world. She used to go, oh, he's a squeezer. And uh, I didn't want to let her go. And now, at this point, point, my wife and I were separated. We were really married, but... We, she, she ended up having a, another guy and, and they separate, yeah, we separated very amicably and everything stuff. She's great, we're, to this day we're great friends. But she had her own thing going. But she visited all the time, brought my daughter all the time. Uh, and her parents, Jim and Tina, great people. And they would bring the, my granddaughter up to me. I mean, my, uh, my daughter up to me, my granddaughter. My daughter up to me and uh, visit all. I mean, they drove all over. You just have to drive. They were in South Florida now. So you gotta remember how far they had to drive. The closest place I ever was to them was Coleman, Florida, and that was about a four hour drive. Then the second closest place I was was Jessup, Georgia, which was about seven or eight hours. Those are the kind of things, you know, I, I used to think about and, and realize how loved I was by my people. But the stress level for me would be on the way in the visit and I didn't know they were coming, or I knew they were coming, but I couldn't contact them. So all of a sudden, they tell you they're gonna be there nine because you want a, a long visit. And uh, they're not there. What do you do? They're not there. 9.30, you wonder what's going on? 10 o'clock, what's going on? Now, if somebody was home, like uh, at one point we had, uh, uh, my wife's grandmother was home. So, you know, we had a deal that if anything went wrong, call the house, I would call the house and then I'd get the relayed message. If they're not there, you're done. You, there's no way to know. And it's not their fault. They could have been there on time and the prison don't give a shit. The prison brings the people in as, as they say fit. Now, I know a question is going to come and I'm going to answer it right now. What do I do if the visiting room is so crowded? Because there is a, a fire code and they can only let people in so long. So how they do that is the people who are there the longest will go back and then they'll close their visit down. So if you get a visit from first thing in the morning, nine o'clock. Now visiting room used to close at three o'clock. So if, if it's people waiting by noon and you've already been in there three hours, four hours, they're gonna say, Lawton, 15 minutes, 15 minutes. So I got 15 minutes. Man, you, man, you just bitch, your people just drove for, you know, 12 hours and shit. Now what I used to do when they did this, they would come up and I would have uh, them come the next day too, a Saturday and a Sunday, because you can do that. You had points, remember? You had six points, so two points per weekend day. Weekday during the week would be one point, which is nice, because I, I, I could, if they came early on a Friday, I'd have a one point day and then a three points and use just half my thing. I could do the same thing again and get four visits in that month, you know, if I can get it. But they didn't dr drive up that much. I mean, I, I, they would come up Oh, wow, I, I saw my daughter, you know, it's kind of sad. I thought, think about this. My daughter was 15 months old when I went to prison. My daughter didn't know I was in prison. Uh, again, she only saw me. They used to say daddy was a truck driver and her daddy is working across the country and we got to go see daddy where he works. So now you got to remember this girl was uh, two, three, four. Um, I used to hug my daughter. I watched her grow up from prison. And uh, so she never knew I was a prisoner until one of her cousins, my sister's kid said, oh, your dad, your dad was a gangster. He's in jail. And you know, that's how she knows, you know, jail. But that, that and that was when she was about uh, nine, or, I guess not eight or nine. I'll ask her exactly when she found out about that, when I have her on. Uh, so I think that's gonna be a, a, a interesting video to get to their perspective of what it was like. And the stress level gets high. Now, when I, ended up having problems in the prison system. When I say problems, I, I, I uh, fought the system a lot. I didn't care and all the stuff that goes along with that. They kept transferring me farther and farther away from home. 
Now, according to the Bureau of Prison Policy, they're supposed to keep you within 500 miles of your release address. Well, my release address was Melbourne, Florida, Palm Bay, Florida, my parents' house. They kept sending me farther away, for the, way past 500 miles uh, from my house. Obviously, they can do whatever they want, and they did mine because of disciplinary reasons and, and just to fuck with me. I find out really the truth now, many, many years later, what happened. And that's what they did with me. But as visiting goes, let's get back to the visiting, it's the stress level I didn't get any visits when I was in Yazoo, Mississippi today. Maybe one when I was way there. Here's another thing. When you're in the hole, unless they take in your visits. Now, when I was in the hole for under investigation, what a fucking act that is. You can still get visits because they didn't take your visit. But when you get a visit from the hole, you are in an orange jumpsuit and they have a special section in the visiting room that you have to stay. Now... It's just, it, it almost felt like it was a way to show to people, oh, here's the fuck up. This is the, the, here's one of the fuck ups. And sure enough, what did they do? They put me in the hole. And uh, when I had a visit, I fucking in an orange jumpsuit and come out. Now here's really where it sucks when you're a, a prisoner. You're in the hole. It's not like you get real ready with a nice shower and get ready for a visit. You might not have had a shower for three, four, five days. Because they don't give you showers as, supposed to, as they're supposed to. They don't, uh, uh, or they'll shut the water down in the, in the cell if there's a shower in your cell. I love that act. So now you're stressed. Now, and here's another thing when you're in the hole. You don't know you're getting a visit because you don't have communications. You can't just call your people. You have to hope a letter got to you that they said, hey, we, we're going to visit. And then they don't want to write that and then something happened and they can't drive wherever it is and all of a sudden you're, you're anticipating a visit. It was the worst. I used to say to them then, write a letter, say, listen, I'm in the hole. Don't visit, please. You know what I mean? I don't want you to stress. I'm stressing. I stress. Now, they stress. My family got used to me being in the hole. <laughs> and they'll tell you, I, I used to, uh, you know, they used to get a letter in pencil. And that's how they knew I was in the hole. So when they got the letter, they go, oh, what do you do now? What do you do now? You know, it was always me, but it really wasn't always me. I mean, now they know, now they know everything that happened. But I look at it in, in, that, in that crazy light that says, man, the stress of these visits, I, you know, I didn't do it, man. You know, it, it, and you know, it's amazing. I'm so lucky I had such a great family. My ex-wife and daughters and their, their people and my dad and mom, I really had the greatest family in the world because they didn't just always come to, what do you do now? Oh, he's bad. He's bad. They saw what was going on. They saw the, 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 the nastiness of the prison system. They all could attest it, and they'll tell you. And in our next video, they're gonna tell you how bad the system is, even to them. My first ex-wife, my son's mom, visited me in school kill uh, uh, prison, and she had a pair of pants on that were just too close to the color, and they made her go to a Walmart and pick up another pants or deny her visit. I mean, you're talking women's pants and all of this, and, and uh, she, uh, you want to talk about stress out? now? And, I, and then I'm stressed out, because now, again, I'm waiting for the visit. Why are they so late? What's going on? I know they left. I know everything. Did they get in a car accident? And you stress, stress, stress. You know, if anything else, the prison system puts years and years of fucking stress on you just in the way they do things, just in the way they handle you, the way they handle uh, people. The, they don't give a fuck, and, and we all know this. I hope they change things, and, and I'd love to hear that they've changed things. Not a chance in hell. Everybody that gets out, I ask them, hey, what's changed? Nah, ah, fucking shit's nothing changed. Get worse. They're fucking taking this now, they do this. You know, uh, everything they wanna take, 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 because they figure out, unless they have, the less shit we gotta do. That's actually how they think. Believe it or not, that's how they think. But, so the visits for the inmates, very, very stressful. Now, I do know of people and inmates who actually were gonna be out of prison and they had a lot of money and they would actually get an apartment for their wife in the really close to the prison they're in and get as many weekday visits because of the points as they can. So if you had six points, they'd get, 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 get a visit every week and then twice on some weeks, you know, get, it'd all be a Friday or a Monday visit because that's what they had them. I think there was, a, uh, there, was, there was one day of the week that they didn't have visits at all. I think it was one day or two days. I think it was 
Tuesday, Wednesday, or Monday, Tuesday, one of those two days, they didn't have uh, uh, visiting days. They would close down. In every prison, they did that. We, I, there was one, I gotta say, there's some cool, cool guards that we had. Uh, when I was in Jessup, Georgia, we had a really cool guards. Uh, that's where the guy Gary Massey was, a great guy. Uh, they had a guy named Spells and uh, Spencer and these guys. Well, when they ran the visiting room, I mean, we knew that if it was a Friday and you were the first one out there and your girl was out there, whoever was coming to visit you, man, he turned ahead, man, he says, hey, you know, the camera on the, on the patio's broke. He'd tell you that. And you're out there fucking banging your old lady over the fucking bench. And you know, nobody around or whatever it is. Literally, you're the first, second person in there and you're getting a quickie in there. Uh, and boy, you know, it, it, it's crazy, you know. A uh, lot of people did that. I didn't do that. A lot of people did that. I used, to, I used to cover for people. You know, you'd be out there and the guys say, Long, cover for me, man. See when anybody coming. And I'd be over there sitting with my girl and he'd be in the corner, you know, get, getting, uh, getting a little. And, uh, you know, I, I, hell, I used to get a heart on. I'm a voyeur anyway, so I'm watching. But uh, it, it, it was uh, pretty wild. So, but for the most part, I wasn't a visiting guy that needed visits. I needed, you know, I used to, my dad used to visit all the time. When I was in Coleman, Florida, it was about two hour drive from Palm Bay, Florida, uh, Coleman, Florida. And my dad used to visit all the time during the week uh, with another guy, actually one of my friends in prison who passed and that. That wasn't a stressful time at all. I was getting visits all the time from him. And uh, I used to have to say, dad, you can't visit this week because uh, uh, I Missy's coming up, my wife and my daughter and, and coming up and I need the points. You know, uh, so you had to make sure you had the, enough points because they wouldn't care. Now, I have seen it where in a prison where they give you a special point. So, the, the, you know, I, something happened, somebody died, something going on. And, and you say to them, hey, listen, I need a couple more points. My grandmother's out of town from uh, Italy or uh, wherever they're, they're from. And uh, I lost the points and we didn't know she was coming in. Can we get a special visit? And they, they would do that. I, it, depending again, Lawton, after his incident with Tubbs, didn't have a chance, didn't get, get shit. It's just the way it happened, it didn't get shit. So uh, I look at it that way. And, uh, but visiting in prison, I'll tell you what guys, it's stressful. From the prisoner's point of view, very stressful. But I hope you got a perspective of this. Now, on the next part, it's gonna be from their point of view. I'm gonna have them in front of me right here. We're gonna do a video with them and they're gonna tell you how it was from their point of view. And I'm gonna think it's gonna be very interesting. It's not gonna be next video, it's gonna be next Sunday. Next Sunday's video will be that. So it'll be a lot of fun. Anyway, everybody, you have a great day. Enjoy your Sunday. Please be safe. Make good choices. Have a great day, everybody. Stay safe.